Okay, welcome back. So this week we're going to talk about one of the most important techniques in data analysis called the Fourier transform. Okay, so what we're talking about is a discrete Fourier transform and eventually we're going to introduce what's known as the fast Fourier transform or the FFT. And it's one of the most important algorithms ever developed, uh, especially for, um, for computation with computers. Okay, and the Fourier transform is extremely important for um, image compression, audio compression, um, whenever you talk on your cell phone or send a picture over the internet, you're using a Fourier transform to compress that data um, and then to decompress that data. So this is a central algorithm uh, for all of you know, data analysis and data compression. And uh, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the mathematics and then show you how to use this in MATLAB. Okay. So the Fourier transform is basically built on this idea that some functions are better approximated with sines and cosines. Okay, so we're used to thinking about Taylor expansions. So if I have some function like a quadratic, this is um, like a fourth order function f of x equals uh, x to the fourth minus x squared, something like that. Okay. This function is well represented by a Taylor series. It's well represented by a polynomial. So well represented by a polynomial. So that makes you think Taylor series. Uh, and in particular, if I had a second order Taylor series expansion, then I would approximate this function with a parabola. And it would actually do pretty good in this region here, but it would disagree with my function far away. But if I had just a fourth order uh, Taylor series approximation, then I would perfectly reconstruct this function because the function itself is just a fourth order polynomial. So this is a fourth order Taylor. Okay, so lots of functions are actually well approximated by Taylor series. That's great. Um, we use Taylor series a lot. But some functions are really poorly approximated with Taylor series. So um, let's take, for example, a sine wave. Okay, so if I just have uh, sine of t or sine of x, this function is not very well approximated by a sine. And I'm going to put my origin right here. This is x equals 0. So this is f of x equals sine of x. So to approximate this function using a Taylor series approximation about 0, if I do a first order expansion, I just get a line. And that line agrees pretty well in a vicinity of 0, but it doesn't agree for all of the other uh, points in, in space. If I had a cubic polynomial, it might give me something like this, which is, you know, it's getting better but it's still not good you know, for all of, the other, all of the other points x. And I would have to keep increasing this uh, polynomial order higher and higher and higher to capture all of, the, all of the switchbacks in this sine function. Okay, so this sine function is kind of hard to approximate with a Taylor series far away from the base point. And instead, what we're going to do is approximate functions like this using sines and cosines. So this one's perfect. This is just, this is a sine. This function is sine of x. Okay, so I only need one sign to represent this function. Other functions um, I might have to write as sine of x plus another sine of 2x and so on and so forth. And I can expand functions in terms of signs of higher and higher frequencies. So these are kind of our two options. We have the Taylor series, which is a polynomial expansion. And we have a Fourier series, which is a sine and cosine expansion. Okay. Now, what I'm going to show you is essentially um, a discrete version of a theory called Fourier analysis. So Fourier analysis is an entire field of mathematics that talks about how to approximate functions in terms of uh, an infinite series of sines and cosines. And um, it's a really, really interesting and beautiful theory. It's very powerful in modeling physical systems. But um, what we're really interested for this class is how do we do this idea of a Fourier series or Fourier transform on data? Okay, so this is the notion of a discrete 
Fourier transform as opposed to a continuous Fourier transform. Okay, good. So now we're going to talk about the discrete Fourier transform. And the entire idea here is how do we take data and represent that data as a sum of sines and cosines. So let's say that I have some function f over some spatial variable x. This could also be time. It doesn't really matter. And I have you know, some interesting function. Maybe this is an audio signal. Maybe this is the um, audio signal for five seconds of your favorite song. And you have this data sampled at various locations. In the audio example, this would be time. You have this signal sampled at a number of locations, either in space or in time. And we're going to call these um, f0, f1, f2, f3, and so on and so forth, all the way up to fn. We're going to have n, uh, maybe fn minus 1. So we started with 0. We're going up to n minus 1. So we have n total measurement points in this function. Okay, And what we would really like to do is we would like to take this vector of values f. So we're going to take our vector of values f0, f1, f2, dot, 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 up to fn minus 1. This is a collection of measurements. And we're going to take this and run it through our discrete Fourier transform. And we're going to get another vector of numbers. We're going to get another vector of numbers, f0 hat f1 hat, f2 hat, and so on and so forth, up to f n minus 1 hat. Okay, And so if I start with n numbers in my you know, n samples of my function, and I run it through my discrete Fourier transform, let's write this down, d f t is a discrete Fourier transform. So when I run these, this data through my discrete Fourier transform, what I'm going to get out is a bunch of coefficients, the same number. So I'll have n of these coefficients. These are called my Fourier coefficients. And what they tell me, these are amplitudes of sine waves that I need to add up to reconstruct this signal. Okay, so this is kind of a complicated idea, but it'll become a lot more clear when we uh, draw a picture and do a MATLAB example. So the entire idea here is that I can take my function, um, you know, my my function here, and I'm just going to draw this this sketch of this. So this is my function f, and I can write this as a sum of a bunch of sine waves. So I have a first sine wave, which is just um, you know sine and cosine waves. So my first one might just be a big uh, low frequency sine wave over the entire domain. And then I'm going to add another higher frequency sine wave. And I'm just going to keep adding these up, higher and higher frequency sine waves, uh, until I can add these sine waves up and rebuild this functional shape. And so the coefficients of these are f naught hat, f1 hat, f2 hat, and so on and so forth. Um, and we're going to keep adding up these Fourier coefficients times these shapes, these higher frequency sine waves. And eventually, once we add up enough of these, when we add up n of these, we'll perfectly reconstruct this shape at all of the data points uh, that we measured. OK? So this isn't 100% precise, but this is kind of the cartoon sketch of what we're doing. We have data points for a function. We're sampling at n points. And so we're going to add up n different sine waves of higher and higher frequencies. And we're going to add them up in these mixtures, in this amount. So f naught hat of the first sine wave, f1 hat of the second sine wave, and so on and so forth. And so the trick is going to be, how do we get these Fourier coefficients? What can we use them for? Why are they interesting? Okay? And that's what we're going to see in the next parts of this lecture. We're going to get a physical interpretation uh, for what these mean how we compute them in MATLAB, and how we can use these Fourier coefficients for things like audio compression, image compression. Let's say you have a signal with a bunch of noise on it, so this is really noisy measurements. I can use the Fourier transform to filter out the high frequencies that might be the noise, and then inverse Fourier transform and reconstruct a nice clean signal. Okay, So there's tons of stuff we're going to do with this. 
Um, the trick is getting these Fourier coefficients and then working with them. Okay, thank you.